friends, we're coming up to the end of another great year of gaming. It's 2022, it's December, and now it's time to look back at the past year and see where we've been and maybe get a glimpse of where we're going to go in the future. Today, I thought it would be fun to rank every single game that I played in 2022 in order from top to bottom all the way down from first to 22. Well, 23. There's a least good game of the year. And hopefully you agree with me so you'll like and comment. If you don't agree with me, still comment. I think it's pretty reliable. I really do. I think you guys are going to be able to predict some of these. I don't think it's that crazy. But I will say, I'm not a huge fan of the games that came out this year. I feel like there are a lot of okays and no real like. I have to start with games I did not play yet. Evil West, which did look appealing to me. The Callisto Protocol. But honestly, at the time of me making this image, they're not out yet. Since then, they both came out. Also, Stray. Honestly, I missed the wave on this one. I didn't get a chance to play it when it came out, and now if I played it on stream, I would get 10 viewers. It's up for Game of the Year. It looked to me like Uncharted with a cat, and that's not interesting to me. Scorn looked bad. Very bad. Very, very bad. Just kind of looked boring. It looked interesting at first, but looked pretty shitty. And the last one, The Devil in Me. I didn't play this one. Also, I heard that it sucks. But I have heard from other people that it's the second best thing they've ever made behind Until Dawn. So what the fuck do I know, okay? <laughs> but uh, also, I'm not playing this shit. I'm not going to do this. If you come in here expecting a review of this garbage, I'm not doing it. I played Arceus. It is on this list. If you're a Pokemon fan, keep watching. I think you will be pleased. Did somebody say Box of Awesome? This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Cha! Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that sends you a Box of Awesome, which is full of top quality products from under the radar brands. It's completely free to join. You can skip a month or just cancel any time that you want. 90% of the products that come in these boxes are from small brands, many of which are based right here in the United States. Like this knife that you can find in the Forge box. This Damascus steel knife is made by Buck and Bear Knives, located in Pennsylvania. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces its members to really cool new products. You've got outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, even live oysters, depending on a preference quiz that they fill out. So if you really like oysters, Say that on the quiz. They'll send you some. Now, every single box of awesome that they send you is going to have around $70 worth of goods inside. But you're only going to pay for a fraction of that value. One of the coolest things is that you can preview your box before it's shipped. So they're going to assign a box of awesome to you. And then you can decide whether you want to keep it, swap it out for a different box, or skip that month for entirely no charge. You only pay for what you want. One of the coolest things about Bespoke Post is that they have a lineup that's constantly changing every month. They sent me some stuff this month, and I got the Tonto box, which you can see right here. I opted in for this. See, it comes in this lovely little box with a picture that shows you how you're supposed to use it. You cut things, because I get a lot of shipments in, and I haven't been cutting them. I've been kind of ripping them open with my hands, and sometimes I get paper cuts, and it hurts from the cardboard. Wow. And look at the ornate detailing on that. Unbelievable. Not into knives? That's okay. There's also the parked box, which comes with this lovely compact chair from Ren. This lets you sit anywhere. I personally am going to like it because I take my daughter to the park a lot, and she plays there for a long time, and there's nowhere to sit. Thank God for this. Big thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Guys, if you want to check out Bespoke Post and get your first box of awesome, I can get you 20% off your first box. Yes, it's true. I know. I'm very influential. Click on the link in the description or use the code Coney20 to get 20% off your first box at Bespoke Post. That's BespokePost.com. Time to start off with the least good game of the year. And I want you to realize I use the phrase least good on purpose. I don't really play bad games right now. I, I'm at a point in my life where I don't play trash. The worst game that I'll play is like a five or a six if I'm really into it. My least good game of the year, and it breaks my heart to say this, it really does, is Mario Strikers Battle League. And I don't think it's just because of what it could have been. I really don't. This game got announced, and I pogged the fuck off. I thought it was... It, I was so excited. It's made by Next Level Games. It looked incredible. And then I got my hands on it. It was pretty fun for a week. That's the pro. I won a tournament for this game. Ta-da. Thanks, Grand Pooh Bear. However, this game's kind of dog shit. 
uh, top to bottom. The gear leads to all the characters feeling the same, so there's no personality to any of them. There's no real style. It's kind of slow. It feels like the GameCube version. And it's just a huge step back from Charge, and it made me extra sad because it did come at the cost of Next Level Games, who I trusted. This just solidifies this whole Mario sports thing going on, where they keep putting out a game, it's not finished, it's bad, and then you play it for a week and never pick it back up. And on top of that, they've really pushed this stupid Battle League feature, by the way, which is literally on the title, that's the ranked mode. It wasn't online for a week. However, I must confess, even with all of this admitted, uh, the Callisto Protocol is actually my least favorite game of the year. I, I lied before. This game sucks. This game is not good. It's very bad. I played it for two hours and I'm miserable. The combat doesn't work. All the characters are stupid. Uh, it looks beautiful, but it sucks. I was lying to you so that you would keep listening. This game blows. Actively bad. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Mario Strikers is just, like, flaccid. It comes out and it's just like, eh. This game is aggressively not good. My second least good game of the year, well, third technically now, and again, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's a fun game and it's good. It's funny, but it's a meme game. It's a good meme game, but it's a meme game. It's fine and it's fun, but I do think that it's, it is what it is and that's it. It's not bad, it's the least good. This game, and I think people might be mad about this, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Now, I think people might be upset about this. Listen, I am the prime demographic. I am 34 years old. I was in the arcade. I played Turtles in Time with my dad. And then my dad went out and I got lost in the mall and I couldn't find him and I cried. I played so much of these games as a kid. And I played this one and it's just not... Dude, It's there's nothing here. You beat it one time. That's it. And they're like, oh, that's the selling point. It's exactly what you would have gotten in the 90s. That's 30 years ago. Have a little bit of ambition. I thought this would be higher. I really thought Curse to Golf was going to be higher. Actually shocked. Yeah, so here's the thing. Curse to Golf looks amazing. When you look at it, it's like, oh, that's a really cool idea. But the way the game is set up is it's like a roguelike. So it's like once you beat a level, if you beat levels 1, 2, 3, but die on 4, you have to go back to 1. Going back to level 1 fucking blows. It's terrible it's a really neat concept but the runs are just not fun skill issue don't go back to level one it's a fucking roguelike i'm not beating it my first run you sucked when you played it you mean when i turned on the game for the first time ever do you mean that time when i played it i sucked then yeah okay yeah next up pegley now i'm not mad at pegley it is uh, comparatively low. What is this? You guys don't know Peglin? It's sound. It's it's a Peggle roguelite. That's a Pog T if ever I've heard one. It's Peggle, but in a roguelite. It's not that interesting though once you start to play it. But it is an early access, which is why I'm not mad at it. It's very early on. Peglin is a great concept, and I think it'll get better. But for right now, I don't think it's that interesting. This one really hurt me. It's another game I think many of you probably have not heard of. Stay out of the house. This comes to us from Puppet Combo, who's a horror developer that I really like. I really love the art style and the, the ambience that this team does. Stay out of the house is the most ambitious thing they've ever made, but it kind of sucks. There's really good atmosphere and tension. It builds, it's done really well, but it's way too long. There's so much repetition and so much stuff you have to do over and over. And then I got out of chapter two and there's like, I was only done with half of the game when I got my end. And there was like double the game. Sucks. Next up on my list, it's a little game called Arcade Paradise. I'm not gonna talk much about this. It's pretty simple. It's an arcade running sim. Uh, it's a nice little time waster game. It's kind of shallow. It's a fun gameplay loop, but there's just not that much to it. It's pretty cool. It's not very deep, but I had fun with it. Okay, this next one I really thought would be higher, Neon White. I was playing it, and I was like, oh, this is pretty fun. I like this, and I was, I was enjoying it. But the characters never shut the fuck up, and it's really bad. So you're this guy, because of course you are, right? This chick is sexy but aloof. She keeps you at a distance, which is why she has a sniper rifle. And she's, like, being all sexy with you, and the main character goes, Ugh! 
Hmm, maybe I'll polish off your rifle. And it's like that for 30 hours. This game is fucking exhausting. And then this chick down here, and her whole thing is like, this level is hard, but I know something harder. I can't fucking stand this. This whole medium is embarrassing. But the idea is really cool. The game encourages you to speed run through it. It's a really fun game. I would highly recommend skipping every cutscene. 15? <laughs> it's not good. I think a lot of people will tell you it's good. It's not bad, though. It's not a bad game. It's the best Sonic since Mania, which is an Omega laugh. But it's a Skittles game. What's a Skittles game? Oh, I would love to tell you. My, my way that I describe open world games with a big map is it's like you went to an empty parking lot with a bag of Skittles and you threw them all up in the air. And then you have to go around the parking lot collecting them. Oh, a red one here. Here's a green one. Here's a yellow one. And if you can derive joy out of that, you will enjoy Sonic Frontiers. I mean, if they keep making Sonic, if this is a base, it's a good base for a game. If you build off it, great. But I'm sick of these fucking foundations. Make the full game. I think a lot of people will be like, what? <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of you haven't heard of this game. I would like to show you something. It's Doom. But it's very cool Doom. The art style is really neat. The voice acting is god awful, but it's funny. I would highly recommend this game, and I think it's better than Sonic Frontiers. Because at least this game has, like, an identity <laughs> beyond Sonic in, a, in a, a large open world. Niche isn't a negative? No, I just mean that, like, it's it's a niche in a, in a very saturated niche. Does that make sense? There's Ultra Kill, there's Dust, there's Cultic, there's like a billion of these. How does this stand out? It's the only one that I really played. Now this one might piss you guys off, but I feel it deep in my bones, okay? I know this is the darling that everybody's going crazy for. I know you're supposed to fillet this game at all instances. It's a mobile game, you guys. You, you bought a mobile game. <laughs> you literally bought a mobile game. And hey! Listen, I love the mobile game, bro. I liked it, but it's a fucking mobile game. It's one button. It's a hella good mobile game. It's a good brain tickle game. The number goes up and you're like, oh, can it get much higher? It's a dopamine releaser, but a lot of other games do that better. Number 12, shockingly, another vampire game. This game had like a week in the sun. It's a vampire battle royale. It's really fun, but it's just a saturated market. I might just like this game because I was pretty good at it, actually. I was, like, decent at this game. I'm not normally good at BRs, but I was pretty good at it, which made it fun for me. Oh, just outside the top ten. Before I show you, you have to promise not to be mad at me. Do you promise? Do you swear? Too late. <laughs> well, in for a penny, in for a pound. If you're mad, I might as well make you matter. Uh, Kirby. Kirby's number 11. Hey, it's fun and all. And hey, it's Kirby. But it's not Mario. <laughs> and I'm not mad at him for not being Mario. I'm mad because Mario is captivating beginning to end. Mario is just a better series. Kirby's probably better for kids, right? But I'm an adult. I'm a grown-ass man, and I want some Super Mario. I just can't get that excited playing a Kirby game. The most I ever get is, oh, that's cute, or muted bemusement. Like, oh, mm. And that's the thing. Like, it's number 11, but even number 22 was a good game. These are all good games, except for Callisto Protocol. This game blows dick. It's just there's not that much to it. It's 3D Kirby, you know? It's now time to get into our top 10. Number 10. It's The Quarry. The Quarry is a game by Supermassive. They make these big movie games that are crazy. And a lot of silly stuff happens in them. And they're kind of funny to play with friends. They're not great, but they are fun. But that is inherent in, in their greatest flaw. Um, you need a stream or friends. I know a lot of people are probably confused as to why it was so high. Uh, I, I would encourage you to read th this part. Maybe go out and make some connections. Join some Discord servers or something. 
Um, this game is great if you have people to play it with. If you don't, it sucks. Full disclosure, I was paid to play this game, but I really liked it. I really liked it, and I still do. It is a very fun game. I've seen streamers play this game and lose half of their viewership for doing so. And that is the sacrifice that players are willing to take to play more Rumbleverse. This game is crack. The problem is, it needs a little bit of sauce. I don't know what it needs. It's hard to explain. Money? Oh no, it has money. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> they have money. It needs a WWE sponsorship. Dude, this is the most like blatant, targeted, like please sponsor us thing I've ever seen. And I hope they get it. If I could be John Cena, I would turn this game on tomorrow. This one's kind of a dark horse for the year. Uh, I think I like the idea more than the game itself, but I thought it was so remarkable that I wanted to include it. This game is called Card Shark. It's kind of a bunch of WarioWare mini games all added together. Like this, you have to pick it, you have to pour the wine while looking at his card. But the real standout of the game is the story and the dialogue. It is tremendous. It's extremely well written all the way through. The problem with the game is that the gameplay is really at odds with the concept. There's a bunch of times in the game where you go to a guy's house to scam him because he's rich, and then he finds you out because you messed something up, and he's like, wow, get out of my house. And then literally the next day, you show back up. And he's like, all right, let's play cards, I guess. <laughs> I'm glad you learned your lesson. This time, things will be different. And then you scam him, and you win every hand. Number seven. This might be a game that you might have forgotten came out this year, or you didn't know came out at all, and you it wasn't even on your radar. This game is Rogue Legacy 2. It's a roguelike where the numbers go up, but it's junk food. The game is empty carbs. It exists, it's good. If you like numbers going up and roguelikes, give it a shot. Those are the best games, I mean, they're fun. Sugar's tasty and all, but I don't, you know, once I'm done with it, I'm done. I got my fill and now I'm done. I never wanna play it again. Number six is the first eight out of 10, Arceus. Arceus, I think, got people a little bit too excited for what it was, myself included. It was kind of basic and barren, but it made the game kind of fun. Uh, catching Pokemon has never been like that. The fact I don't have to get into a battle with a Pokemon to catch it was really cool. There's not this repetitive back and forth turn-based thing. I can ignore that. Kony, did you even beat this? That's the thing, no. No, I did not. Now, I think a lot of people would say put it lower because of that, but I don't think so. I think a game having a strong start but not keeping me invested all the way through, especially for a pretty long game, I find that better than a game who has one idea that you play for like 30 hours, like Rogue Legacy. It's a Skittles game though. Yeah, but for me, the novelty of actually catching Pokemon and just bonking them on the head and they show up in the ball was tremendous. Top five. Do you guys have any guesses? Cult of the Lamb? Oh, fuck! I forgot to rank it. Forgot one of the only good games this year. Uh... Cult of the Lamb is 12. Cult of the Lamb is 12. It was fun for the first hour. It was fun for like six hours. But it got, like, the combat's not good. All right, number five game of the year. It's Sifu. Sifu's a fantastic game. It is exceptionally lean which I really value. The game doesn't overstretch. It doesn't expand itself beyond its means. It has an identity and idea, and it nails it. It's excellent. But once you're done, there's not really much you do after to keep you going. I don't think lack of replayability is a negative. Neither do I, but that's why it's number five. I, I, don't, I think this is a good thing. I said when it came out, Sifu is like the perfect eight out of 10 game, and I wish it came out every three months. Not Sifu, but I wish a game like Sifu came out every three months. Number four, I'm gonna get a lot of huns here. Remember Tinykin? <laughs> Remember that? That came out, yeah. I liked it a lot. I really liked Tinykin. Now, will you like Tinykin? I don't think so. I don't think you will. This is the game built for Kony. <laughs> it's like Pikmin mixed with like a, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like more tactile Pikmin, but for some reason, and chat, please don't make the easy joke here. I love games where you're little and going in through a big world. Don't make the joke. Don't do it. Stop. 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 I don't think YouTube knows yet. They, th they, they think I'm six foot. 
I, 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 I just, I think that's cool. A game with a different perspective. Because, you know, I'm so tall. <laughs> I like seeing what it's like to be the little guy, you know? But the story is fucking weird. <laughs> I, t I, I, like, tuned out. Which is gonna happen later. Uh, please don't be mad at me. Game stories are less and less interesting to me. But the game was extremely fun. I binged all of it. Kind of short. But this game was made for me. Will you like it? I don't know. All right, so uh, I messed this up, but we're gonna we're gonna add this, and we'll fix it later. Okay. My number four game of the year is Multiverses. Okay. It's number four. Multiverses started off extremely strong, but it just kind of died out for me. Do you still play? No. Number three game of the year. I really think this is gonna surprise people, and I was pretty surprised too. This game is called Roller Drum. Let me show you Roller Drum. Pro. It's so cool. It's so fucking cool. This game is so goddamn cool. The vision of this game and the execution is spot on. The art style hits directly. It is exactly what it looks like. When I saw this game, I was like, it's not really gonna play like that. It does. The game plays like that. It's like Tony Hawk mixed with a shooter. It's not very long, but it's still my third favorite game this year. I would have played it more if there was more of it. Two and one, I think people will be able to guess. Once I show two, you're going to know what one is, but which is which. I don't think this is especially controversial. I think God of War is number two. It's great. The gameplay is rock solid. I beat it all the way through. I 100% the game did everything that I could in it because I really enjoyed it and loved it. I hated the story. I really did not like the story at all. The characters annoyed the shit out of me. And I know people are going to get mad at me because they're like, oh, it's so deep. Listen, this whole, like, cycle of revenge thing is so annoying and played out. The Last of Us 2 is is the same fucking thing. Like, this isn't even the only Sony franchise that deals with this subject matter. Bro, I think revenge might be bad, actually. Yo, let's keep talking about it over a 20-hour campaign. Number one, the game of the year, to no one's surprise. It has to be. It has to be. I have been very critical of this game, as you all know, but there's nothing like it. There really is. FromSoft is untouched. It's so ambitious. FromSoft has ne have never tried something like this. I think the summon system is genius. It's a way to introduce an easy mode without it being easy. It feels pretty thoughtful top to bottom, too. Like, the way that they did stuff. It feels like they did it with intentionality and purpose. The bad parts of the game I've been vocal about. The last 20% of the game is bad. Bad, 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 bad. I don't know if it's 20, 25%. For me, it was everything after Fire Giant. And I think the end bosses are hard for the sake of the meme. And everybody's like, oh, Malekith, so cool. The Black Blade, whatever. Um... No, he sucks. <laughs> Millennia is horrific. I can't believe they put that in the game. Millennia is fine. She's not. She's not. She's not. The whole fight is is centered around one move. That's stupid. If you know how to beat the move, you win. If you don't know how to beat the move, you lose. Radagon is good. Horalu is good. Or Godfrey or whoever he is before. Great. Regardless, I think the last bit of Elden Ring is some of the worst Souls-like game I have ever played. But there is so much before it that I can't help but call it Game of the Year. This is the only game that, like, enraptured me, you know? I wanted to see everything. And it's their problem now. <laughs> Send it off into the world. Let's see if it flies. Look at that. Oh, baby. That is long. Elden Ring is my game of the year, and these are my top games of 2022, everybody. I hope you agree. Do you agree? Do you not agree? I care a lot. Tell me below. We'll see you next time. Remember to subscribe, because I'll give you more lists later.
Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye. 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 See you next time. Goodbye.